Hi all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. I have another horrible story to bring to you from Florida, where a 65 year old retired principal and Sunday school teacher, Tracy Nix, has been arrested after not one, but two of her grandchildren died while in her care. Nick's daughter, Kayla, the children's mother, has called for her arrest and believes she deserves jail time after two of her babies died while in their grandmother's care. How did the deaths occur? Let's go back to 2021, just three days before Christmas. According to Kayla, her mother was caring for her 16-month-old son, Ezra, when she fell asleep on the couch. Her mother told the police that when she woke up, she couldn't find Ezra anywhere, so she went outside to look for him and eventually spotted him floating face down in the pond next to her home. She pulled him out of the pond and began performing CPR while someone else called 911, but I'm not sure who it was. Little Ezra was rushed to the hospital with a very weak pulse, but unfortunately they were unable to save him. Horrific accident? Maybe. Let's keep going. At the time of Ezra's tragic death, his mother Kayla was pregnant. Three months after losing little Ezra, her precious daughter Uriel was born. Now, police investigated Ezra's death and ruled it an accidental drowning. But even though it was ruled an accident, Kayla and Ezra's father, Drew, said they wanted nothing more to do with Nick's. And I don't blame them. They trusted her with their child, and their child ended up losing his life. Now I know accidents happen, don't come for me. But I don't blame them, and you'll learn why later. Over time, Kayla said that since Ezra's death was ruled an accident, she and Ezra's dad, Drew, decided that they didn't want to lose their family and lose the relationship with Kayla's mom. So they decided to believe in second chances. So according to Kayla, her mother was allowed to have visits with baby Uriel, but they were always supervised, never alone. They believed that Nix was truly sorry for what happened and truly torn up about what happened to little Ezra and they wanted to trust her again so they did now it's not clear to me if what happened next happened for the first time they trusted her alone with Uriel or not but when Uriel was seven months old Kayla and Drew decided to trust her mother to take care of her while she went to get her hair done on November 1st of 2022 almost an entire year after losing Ezra. Kayla said she trusted Nix with Uriel that day because she knew she was going to lunch with her friends and that Kayla knew and trusted the people she was going to be with. So she thought they would definitely help with Uriel and make sure she was safe as well. Then, after lunch, Nix would be returning home with Uriel, where her husband would be. So, what could go wrong between lunch and and returning home, right? Well, according to Nick's story, she did return home. She went into her house, talked to her dog, and then proceeded to sit down and play piano for hours until another one of her grandchildren came by for a visit. And Nix realized that she never brought baby Uriel into the house with her from the car. She left her in the hot car with the windows rolled up in her garage on a 90 degree Florida day for hours while she played the piano. Her story goes that when her other grandchild showed up, she remembered she left her in the car. She told her husband he went outside and found her in the car Again, with the CPR, he began performing it, and it was too late. Uriel was declared dead at the scene. Seven months old. Second grandchild dead. Less than one year after the death of her first grandchild. 
Now, I know how easy it is to judge the parents at this point. I get it. But I'm not going to do that. Do I wish they had stuck to wanting nothing to do with Nyx? Absolutely. But there's nothing that you or I could say about their decision that could even begin to touch the amount of pain and regret that they are already experiencing. These people are going through hell as a result of the decision they made. There's nothing that we can say that they don't already know, beat themselves up over, and have to live with and try to sleep with every night. They're in hell. Their babies are gone. And you have to know that if they believed Ezra's death was an accident, they never thought it could happen again or would happen again. Now, what I will do is say that I'd hope they made sure at least that deadbolts were installed high up on all the doors in the Nick's house to make sure that the same thing wouldn't happen to Ural when she grew up and got older and started walking before they decided to give her a second chance to watch her. But I suppose they could always be left unlocked, right? So, not sure how much good they would have done anyway. I mean, Nick's husband was home when she arrived home after lunch. But how much good did that do? Apparently, he didn't notice his wife returned from lunch without Uriel. Did he even know that she was watching Uriel that day? He had to hear Nick's playing the piano. She claimed that she played for a while, for hours. He never entered the room where Nix was playing the piano to see his grandbaby. Maybe he didn't know she was even supposed to be there. But that's where my questions begin. And these are just questions I have. If Nix was going to watch Uriel that day, no one, not one person, took the precaution of letting her husband know so he could keep an eye on things when she got back home? You know, make sure that she didn't fall asleep again or anything? I mean, if they made sure he knew that Nick's had Uriel, he would have made sure that she had her with her when she got home, right? She wouldn't have been left in the hot car. But I haven't read any reports at all saying that he knew that Uriel was supposed to be there. Maybe that's why he never checked for her. I mean, Nix was playing the piano and he never, they never said that he came into the room to even see the baby at all. I wonder why nobody, especially Nix, made sure that he knew. Or did he know? Where was he in the house? I ask because Uriel's death was completely avoidable, with just the simple precaution of having Nick's husband check on Uriel when she arrived home after lunch. But it didn't happen. Now, if you're one who can't wrap your mind around leaving a child in a hot car, or how a child can even get forgotten in a hot car, I'm with you. You'll never hear me accepting any excuse for that on this channel. Why? Because there's no excuse for it. It can be prevented very easily by placing a diaper bag on the passenger seat next to your purse, by holding a baby rattle or a small toy in your hand while you drive, by setting an alarm on your phone to go off as soon as you should be arriving home with a reminder that the baby's in the car, by calling someone to ask them to call you and just give them a time at such and such a time when I think I'll be home just to make sure you got home safely with the baby. By laying a baby blanket on your lap that will remind you when you get out of the car that there's a baby in the car. There's a thousand things you can do to prevent it. Not doing anything to prevent it is the problem. And I'm sorry, but she or someone that she probably watched do it placed a baby seat in her car that day. They had to have for the baby 
to ride in the car. Now, unless she always had a car seat, which I doubt if they didn't generally let her take the baby places and watch her. So she put that car seat in or someone else put the car seat in that day. You're not going to tell me that she put a car seat in her car. She traveled with that child and went to lunch, showed that precious baby off to her friends at lunch, no doubt doted over her, bragged about her, you know, normal grandma things, brings her home, parks her car in the garage and forgets about her? I call BS. How long would her drive home have to be for her to forget all that? Now you got to remember, you're talking about she had the child in her car, went to lunch with friends, just had that child in her arms, probably passing her around to her friends. The child was probably, you know the child was the center of attention at lunch. How did she forget about her in a matter of just, what, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes on a drive home? I call BS. What do they say now? Stop the cap? BS, she forgot. I'm not buying it. Judge me all you want. But I got no problem judging Nix's BS. Put your phone next to the baby in the back seat. Bet you won't forget that. Or, if you do, you'll remember it pretty quick. We all forget things. All of us. But when a child's life is involved, small measures are nothing to make sure a child is safe. Especially especially after what already happened to her other grandchild. I mean, was she drinking at lunch? Because I can't imagine her friends would have been okay with that, with her having a baby and getting ready to drive her home. When Ezra drowned, it was questioned whether or not she was taking any meds that made her sleepy. If she was, and still is, why wasn't anybody checking on her to make sure she was okay with Uriel? Why would she be allowed to drive with her? There are so many questions. So many. Why is it that we only hear of kids being forgotten in hot cars in the summer and not frozen in them in the winter? Never mind, we can come back to that one. Why wouldn't she take extra care, extra, extra, extra care to make sure her grandbaby was safe after what had already happened, she had already, already been neglectful with one grandchild. And she's not going to go out of her way to do anything at all whatsoever to protect another one. And why would she even watch another one of her grandchildren again after that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust myself. I couldn't live with myself if another grandchild even stubbed a toe in my care. After that, I wouldn't do it. Kayla said when Uriel passed, she learned that police wanted to press charges on Nix when Ezra passed. But the prosecutor's office refused to pursue charges. Imagine if they had. Uriel would probably be alive today. Listen to what Kayla and Drew had to say about it. According to the complaint affidavit, David, on November 1st, 2022, Kayla was going to get her hair done and asked her mom to babysit. Tracy met friends for lunch, drove home, and forgot her granddaughter in the back seat of her 2019 Lexus with the windows rolled up. She went inside, talked to her dog, and practiced the piano. When one of her grandsons arrived, all of a sudden it came across her head that Uriel was in the back seat all afternoon. Her husband immediately began CPR. Temperatures in Wachula that day reached 90 degrees. Uriel died. She was seven months old. To think of the last moment of her life as a mother yeah. is gut-wrenching. A little girl. How do you forget a little girl? After identifying his daughter at the hospital, Drew remembers... We're out in the parking lot just trying to grasp about what just happened and that it actually just happened twice in our lifetime twice in less than a year 16 month old ezra uriel's brother also died while under his grandmother tracy's care 911 where is your emergency uh that's a little baby uh 
My grandmother's out giving him CP. Is he breathing? No. No, no. Okay, it was a well, pond? Yeah. And they're not sure how long the child was in the pond? No. Kayla and Drew had never seen the incident report, detailing how Ezra drowned in a nearby pond the afternoon his grandmother fell asleep. In the report, the detective wrote, a complaint affidavit for child neglect will be forwarded to the state attorney's office for further review. I didn't know that they had ever attempted to file charges. Kayla says she will never forget what a deputy told her. I was told that unless I believed that my mom held my son's head under the water and intentionally killed him, that there is nothing else that they can do about my son's death. So, what do you think? Horrible accidents or horrible murders? Or a combination of both? As much as I don't want to believe she murdered her beautiful grandbabies, I can't let the fact that both of these supposed accidents were easily preventable with a few well-placed deadbolt locks and a few well-placed baby toys or a diaper bag. It's not like they didn't know they had a lake outside of their house and a toddler inside of their house. And who says she ever fell asleep? She did. She was home alone with Ezra. So there was nobody else there to call BS on her story. Then, she didn't make sure anybody checked on her with baby Uriel when she returned home from lunch. So there was no one to stop her from leaving baby Uriel in the hot car for hours. Interesting. If you ask me, her Ezra story is a little too Casey Anthony. And her Uriel story, playing the piano as her grandbaby suffered and passed in a hot car, is a little too Hannibal Lecter for me. You know? The trial will be interesting. That's for sure. But no amount of prison time she gets will ever bring peace to their family. The loss of those precious babies is just too great. Nick's attorney has filed a motion to have her treated at a mental health facility. That hearing is set to take place on April 27th of 2023. I'll end this video with words of Ezra and Uriel's father. I can't forgive it. Absolutely not. As a father, I can't. I don't even think I can as a Christian. I don't know if I could do that, because it's our children, and our job as a parent is to protect our children. The guilt we have as parents is that we failed, because that's our only job. And to that, I say, Amen. Thank you all so very much for watching. I know these stories aren't easy to listen to. They're certainly not easy to tell you. But I'm going to pray for these little angels. I'm going to pray for their parents that are going through hell. And I'm going to pray that Tracy Nix goes to prison for the rest of her life for what she's done. Agree with me. Don't agree with me. That's fine. All opinions are always welcome on my channel. I'm never always right. None of us are. And we're not going to know until the trial comes. But I'll tell you what, for her to not prevent this from happening a second time, to me, that's unforgivable. Thank you again for watching. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you on my next video.